Today we're going to be looking at order of operations. So this should be a little bit of review. Some people here, please excuse my dear aunt Sally, which is also PEMDAS. Now I write PEMDAS a little bit differently than some. And when I get to the M and D, I put them on top of each other. And then the A and S is on top of each other. And there's a reason for that. So P is parentheses. E is exponents. So this is the order that you simplify in. M is multiplication. D is division. A is addition. And S is subtraction. The reason I write those on top of each other is because once you get to that step of multiplying and dividing. So once I do parentheses and exponents and I am right here, I just go from left to right. Once I get through with multiplying and dividing and I am then at the last one, which is adding and subtracting, I just go from left to right and go in order of what's left. So let's look at a couple examples together. The first one, is going to be, oops, three plus four times six. Now, a lot of times when you're in algebra, you're gonna see multiplication written like that rather than a multiplication sign. The reason to use parentheses is so our multiplication sign doesn't look like a decimal. So let's go ahead and do order of operations. So parentheses is first. I do have parentheses right here. So nine minus four. Nine minus four is five. Okay, that's done. I don't have any exponents. Multiply and divide. If I go from left to right, I'm gonna multiply and divide as I go. So I have four times six and three times five. This is really negative three times five if you want to look at it that way. Now we can add them together and subtract. Again, add, subtract, left, right. Three plus 24 would be 27. And then subtract that 15 to get 12. And there's your answer. Let's look at another one. Okay, next one. We have parentheses four squared plus six, parentheses two, parentheses, parentheses, minus three, parentheses six. All right, so PEMDAS, P, parentheses. Okay, so I'm really, that means I'm looking at this stuff right here. That's what we're gonna do first. So if I'm gonna simplify that first, I now do exponents, so four squared would be 16 and then that's my exponents are done i can still look at those parentheses right here and say okay well i can still simplify those i've got multiplication next and then i have addition 16 plus 12 would be 28 and i'm going to go ahead and multiply whoops I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that other side. Three times six would be 18. 28 minus 18 is 10. Okay, so it's okay to do more than one step at a time as long as you continue staying in order. Let's look at another one. All right, next one we have two to the third over four plus three plus two. All right, so what do we have first? We have P first, parentheses, three plus two is five. I'm gonna bring everything else down. Now we have E, exponents. Remember this two to the third that's right here is two to the third, which is two times two times two, which is eight. Now we're at multiplying and dividing. Eight divided by four is two. 
and then adding and subtracting 2 plus 5 is 7. Okay, let's try one more together. Okay, so our fourth one, we have absolute values now. Let's think about absolute values. I'm going to come over here to the left. An absolute value, remember that is a distance from zero. I like to think of that as like if I'm driving a car and I put it in reverse, my miles don't subtract from my total miles, they continue adding. So if I have negative five, my distance from zero, if I look at a number line, is one, two, three, four, five. It's still five away from zero. If I have a positive five, I'm one, two, three, four, five away from zero, still five away. So it's always a positive number. So on the fourth one, we're going to have the absolute value of six minus three minus four times two, close your absolute value, minus 10. So absolute values you actually treat just like parentheses. So we are going to do all of this stuff inside the absolute value first. So six minus three would be three, minus four times two is eight, three minus eight would be negative five, but remember we have the absolute values of that. Subtract the 10 out here. Don't forget to bring him down. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5, and 5 minus 10 now is negative 5. So your answer doesn't have to be positive. Just the stuff inside the absolute value has to be positive.